I'm going to take some coaching tonight, but here we go. Good evening. Welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeals on July 12th, is it? It is. At 7 p.m. I'm going to call the meeting to order. And first thing we do the Pledge of Allegiance. I don't, do I have an agenda? I hope so. Okay. Yes. I too. Okay. I now I feel better. Um, we're going to uh, stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join us. And Doreen, would you take a roll call? Joe Doherty? Here. David Bork? Here. Michelle Stevenson? Here. Christine Snow? Here. Richard Silkman? Here. And now, shall we approve the minutes from the June 14th meeting? Has everyone looked over the minutes? Are there any comments or changes? I move that we accept the minutes. Thank you, Mr. Silkman. I second. Thank you, Mr. Bork. All in favor? Raise your hand. <clears throat> Madam Chair, before we start, yes. because Peter's not here, Joe needs to be elevated until he comes at least as a voting member. Let's elevate Joe. Okay. okay. So how do we do that formally? Just I think he's just by recognizing it. Yes. Okay. Recognizing. Yep. Thank you, Joe, for joining us tonight. And now approval of the draft decisions. We heard appeal twenty seven forty seven, a practical difficulty variance appeal by John and Jennifer Roan <coughs> of two sextant lane. Does anyone have any comments to add to the draft approval? No. Nope. All in favor? No. Nope. No? Oh, I'm sorry. You have to move A motion to accept. A motion to accept. So moved. I second, second that. Thank you. All in favor? Five zero. Appeal number 2748, Special Exception Appeal, Home Occupation by Roxy Holmes and Ryan Libby at 147 Old Blue Point Road. Does anyone have any comments or amendments? And could I have a? I move that we accept those. The appeal is written. Thank you. Thank you. A second. All in favor? Five zero. Thank you very much. And now we move right into the yep. next item. Appeal number 2750, special exception appeal home occupation by Elijah T.D. Holbrook of 137 Beechridge Road. <clears throat> Great, please introduce yourself and then continue with your um, presentation. Can you hear me all right? Uh, so my name is Elijah Holbrook, and I'm here for a, a special exceptions appeal. I'd just like to talk about a couple things real quick that I believe weren't very well clarified within the documents I had submitted. First one being, um, at the state level and the town level, there are two different things. But then we also have the shellfish ordinance, which is kind of a third party ordinance of also restrictions and regulations. At the state level, uh, as a commercial fish, shellfish harvester, we are allowed to harvest products and sell them from a residency, but we are the only ones allowed to do that, handle and manage the clams. Um, at the town level, as well as for the ordinance for the shellfish committee, there isn't a whole lot well stated or mentioned between the two for what is and kind of isn't allowed, and that's why I am here today. Um, I had watched prior one of your guys's meetings and I know a big um, concern is people entering exiting the premise specifically non backing out uh, I had submitted a couple pictures although the overhead view one right now isn't the um, isn't really a good visual uh, I had submitted a second one of a particular plot of that one yes 
uh, of a particular plot of the property of which people would be able to utilize as a turning around point so they don't have to back out. And um, lastly, yep, and my uh, licenses and qualifications of the town. Thank you. All right. Um, so you are a shellfish fisherman, and you're going to sell these how from your property? From Yeah. So I live in a RF zone, so I'm looking to do kind of more of a farm stand item. And ideally, what I'm looking to do is kind of take orders at the beginning of the week, then I go out, dig, and then I'll be able to meet up with the people who place the orders more towards the weekend, and I'll sell them to them at that point. I, um, I would like to say that I am relatively limited to the capacity of which I can dig. So in terms of people coming in and out, it's give or take, depending on the tides, 10 to 20 people a week. Okay, can you describe more how you expect the operation to work? So I have um, a fridge uh, that's de dedicated cooler for these sh harvested products of which I'll store uh, them in. I will, as I said, I'm looking to take orders preemptively. That way I can gauge how much I need to dig for the week. Approaching the weekend of which I'm looking to then interact with the people who place the orders. I'll have them kind of all preset, bagged out and ready to go. So when people come in, it's interaction. I'm looking for no longer than like five minutes. And in terms of people coming in all at once, I am also looking to kind of segment them out throughout the day. So you, you say that you're looking to do a farm stand, but then you also mentioned that you have a refrigerator because it's shellfish, of course. Um, is it going to be more operated out of like a garage area or is it going to be like a farm stand that you're going to build? Can you kind of elaborate on that? Yeah. So uh, as of right now, I'm looking to have the refrigerator, which is currently in the barn, be movable from within and without it. That way, when people pull in, I'm kind of all set up in front of the barn or even further down the driveway a little bit if it's a little too far back for them. And I'll be able to just open it up, pull it out, and we can just, it's a quick exchange. Just a, a point of clarification there. Uh, the, the ordinance um, requires that all the activities be pursued indoors, not outdoors. And um, what this would mean is that rather than having a farm stand, literally, uh, it would have to be all the uh, retail um, selling would have to occur indoors. Um, is that something that could be done within the barn or shed that you refer to? Yeah, it, it could easily be done. It's just a matter of managing it in a way where people would pull up probably close to the barn as they can and then kind of just step in the very front area of it without going too far into the barn itself. All right, further question. Uh, how will people, uh, you know, how will you sell, okay, and which really gets to the point of how do you market, you know, this business, and then how do you take orders and process orders? Oh, so I have recently created like a Facebook page that I can use kind of as a medium online. I'm also looking to kind of take orders um, through like calls and among that kind of area. Oh. Predominantly, oh, sorry. Okay, okay, well let me just, as a, so you mentioned a Facebook page and but then you said taking orders, uh, uh, you know, through, uh, you know, by phone call. Would you also be able to take orders on a website? I do not own a website as of right now, but looking towards the future, that I, that could be a possibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So, all right, so the way it stands right now, uh, people would have to place orders ahead of time via phone. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so there wouldn't be any walk-up selling. Not really. Um, it, it's hard to say that I can go out and dig a very specific quantity of clams. So the orders is 
give me a good idea of at least how much I need minimum. That being said, there may be a slight, slight surplus of clams outside of that. Right. So, but if you were taking orders by phone, okay, you would at least have an idea of how much product you had available to sell. Uh, how would you actually be transact? Uh, how would you be managing tr uh, transactions for the sale through cash, credit card? You know, uh, cash, yeah. Oh, cash. As of right now, yeah, that's okay. the only means of which I could All do right. my business. All right. So, uh, what this means then is that customers would be able to be able to place an order ahead of time. You would have it all bagged up, ready to go. In refrigeration, they would then come, you know, drive up into the, you know, up the driveway, come to your shed, go inside the shed, and you would then, you know, receive their cash in, in exchange for their product. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, you know, that would work according to our ordinance. So it couldn't be a farm stand outside at this point in time. Now, I understand the planning board is. Um, designing potential changes to the ordinance, which would allow you to have a, uh, an exterior, uh, potentially okay, have an exterior uh, farm stand, so to speak, where it would be outside of the shed. But it has to, all, the, all the transactions have to occur in a fixed enclosed area at this point in time. If you may have the opportunity at some point in time in the future to do it in a different way, but we can't promise that at this time because we don't know what that change in ordinance may be. So I just want to make sure that we're clear on that point, that you're willing to do it this way, with, you know, in compliance with the existing ordinance. You are. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. If I may ask a question, kind of uh, to extend upon that, if what you're looking to do for a change does pass, uh, would I have to come back and then kind of maybe re-amend what my current or what would be current conditions? I don't think you would need to if the ordinance changes and you're allowed to do uh, uh, sell re, uh, your products in a farm stand, you know, by the new ordinance, you wouldn't have to come before us because all we do is to approve exceptions. And right now what you're asking for is an exception to, um, you know, to be able to sell retail uh, shellfish products uh, in a home environment. And that, that's really why you're here tonight. In the future, you may have the opportunity to just do it because the ordinance changes. You wouldn't need to come back to us. If I'm correct, is that Brian? Yeah, I think that's right, Dave. I, I, th I think if there's an amendment made that removes that restriction on shellfish or uh, adds shellfish to the farm stand list of products, then he has the uh, right to do that without having to come back to the board to change that. That fact, and you could also put that as a condition, if you were going to approve it, put it as a condition that should the should the ordinance allow shellfish from a farm stand, you know, but until that time, it needs to be inside. I, I personally would feel uncomfortable trying to yeah, speculate no. what the planning board may or may not do. Yeah, no, I, I would, so any kind of conditions like that are really. However, you want to decide if the yeah. ordinance changes, it changes regardless of what. No, my my main concern at this point was whether or not the applicant was willing to do it according to the sure. way that you know, the, it's currently written, and you have stated that you are willing to do that. And, it's, and we know that at some point in the future that might change, at which point you could just change. So, all right, that's it. Any other questions? That, I have one, Elijah. Um, so w I don't have a picture of the driveway and the barn is the driving driveway adjacent to the barn or uh, is that important or necessary uh, it or? leads straight to it the house is the one that kind of comes perpendicular to the uh, driveway so, so this is the barn. That's, the barn. that's the barn oh that's yeah. the barn okay and here's the driveway. oh see so the setup would be the same regardless yeah okay okay uh, I do have a just a clarifying question. Is this going to be um, the sales at 137 Beach Road, or is it 137 Old Blue Point Road? Is that the same thing? I'm sorry, that was a misprint on that. Oh, okay, okay. It's, it's 137 Beach Road. Gotcha. Thanks. And any more discussion? 
Does anyone have a motion? Oh, excuse me. Beg your pardon. Uh, if I'm mistaken, the applicant has already submitted uh, the necessary documentation. So it's just a matter of going through these and letting the applicant read it for the record. So the way we've done it in the past, you read the question, the applicant responds. Well, they have to ask for it. You can ask again. Does anyone want to address this petition from the public? No, 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 no. No, 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 no that's no. what I said. No, oh, no. Have yeah. you read into the record, and then you can go to the public. And then go to the public. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. So we're going to go through the findings. A, the proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of it, its design or operation. Will you address that? Uh, there are no changes to sewage disposals, emissions to the air or water within the proposed use. Thank you. B, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. I do not see any change or foreseeable traffic impacts. Thank you. The proposed use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree in municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. I do not see any increase in demand to public safety. Thank you. D, the sale of shellfish at the residence will not result in sedimentation or erosion problems as there will be no new construction associated with the use and customers will use the existing paved driveway for ingress and egress. I do not see any change within sedimentation, erosion, or effects on the water supply. Thank you. E, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. I believe my proposition is comparable to other uses as well as there are no changes within any building structures. Okay. F, if located in a shoreland zone as depicted on the town of Scarborough official official shore, shoreland zoning map. The proposed use will comply with all of the requirements of the Town of Scarborough shoreland zoning ordinance. Uh, the property is not located within a shoreline zone. G, the applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Uh, yes, this is my home residency, and any concerns regarding uh, allowable use is addressed by my grandparents, who are my the uh, overseers. Thank you. H, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of his of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection five of this section. I'll meet any and all conditions uh, that are asked of me. Thank you. I, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. Uh, the, sh the shellfish stand, or I guess in this case, the business inside the barn will is comparable to existing uses and there will be no increased or excess noise. Okay, and just for clarification, what are the hours that you anticipate people coming to the barn? So primarily weekends with kind of morning hours, looking to say late morning to early evening. 
Okay. Yes, go ahead, Michelle. Sorry, I have an additional question for you. Um, is this going to be year round? Can you clam year round? I, I don't, I'm not knowledgeable enough on that. Um, so clamming is very dependent on the market price. Most clammers uh, or shellfish harvesters, myself included, only clam during the summertime. So will your business only be open in the summer months? Or will yes. you plan to sell something else in, in the other months of the year? Uh, I do plan on looking to get a standard nine to five job. And this will be more supplementary to that. Thank you. Uh, I would like to also add, thank you for doing your research and watching one of our uh, meetings. And uh, you know, it can t we can tell that you've put some thought into this. So. Thank you. Mr. Bork. Thank you. Uh, uh, questions uh, regarding the, um, the two things, the traffic situation on uh, you know, on the road where you live. Do you know what the speed limit is there? 40. 40, okay. And um, on the turnaround that you've uh, indicated that you're going to ask uh, your customers to use, is that paved? Uh, it's the old Beach Ridge roadbed. Uh, so as of right now, it's not paved, but it does have like an under base beneath the grass that should be substantially usable for anyone who wishes to turn around from there. So what is that, like a gravel base or? Yes. All right, yeah, so that's sufficient for drainage and so forth. So the cars could, you know, do that without um, getting stuck or damaging it then? Yep. And how will you instruct your, uh, your customers to turn around? Um, I'll, I'll point out to them or I'll walk down there myself and guide them to the patch of grass. Okay, so your customers will always be turning around and then facing out into the, you know, to the road. Exit, yes. Exit, yeah, okay. And, and again, it's 40 miles an hour, but that means cars are probably going a little bit faster. But as long as they're facing out to it, then they can exit safely. Sounds right. Like. Okay. Uh, add something else here, I believe, but I think it was answered. Yeah. Um, that's all I had. Everything else was answered. I don't think so. Uh, one thing you haven't done is go through the performance. Right. Do I have them here? You don't? No, we don't have them. I mean, we have a, there's a copy of them right here for another, like, so he could verbally answer you. Like, the, right not the answers. Yeah, I understand. But I can read them. Yeah, yeah. I am now going to go through the list of performance standards, and um, Elijah, I hope that you'll, you know, respond. Number one, the occupation or profession shall be carried on wholly within the principal building or within a building accessory thereto. Yes. The home occupation shall be clearly incidental and secondary to the use of the dwelling unit for residential purposes. Uh, in this case, the barn, yes. No more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling unit shall be employed in the home occupation. Uh, I am the sole individual allowed to sell the clams, so yes. Number four, exterior signage shall be permitted in accordance with the home occupation sign provisions under section 12, sign regulations, subsection E. I'm sure you've discussed the sign regulations. Are you putting out any kind of signage? Uh, just a minor one to kind of help indicate where the residency is. But it will be in conjunction with the yes. rules. Yes. Okay. Number five, there shall be no exterior display, no exterior storage of materials, and no other indication of the home occupation or variation from the residential character of the principal building except as expressly permitted by the district regulations of this ordinance. This prohibition shall not apply to the storage of lobster traps. Yes. Number six, no nuisance shall be generated, including but not necessarily limited to offensive noise, vibration, smoke, dust, odors, heat, or glare. Yes. 
Seven, the traffic generated by such home occupation shall not increase the volume of traffic so as to create a traffic hazard or disturb the residential character of the immediate neighborhood. Uh, there should be no concern for any additional traffic. Number eight, in addition to the off-street parking provided to meet the normal requirements of the dwelling, adequate off-street parking shall be provided for the vehicles of each employee and the vehicles of the maximum number of users or customers the home occupation may attract during peak operating hours. There will be substantial parking uh, within the property used for anyone who comes and goes. Number nine, the home occupation may utilize not more than 20% of the dwelling unit floor area, provided that for the purposes of this calculation, unfinished basement and attic spaces are not included. Unfinished attic and basement spaces and space within an accessory building totaling not more than 1,000 square feet of floor area. Less than 20% of the dwelling floor area, oh, go ahead. Uh, we will be within the confines of that restriction, yes. Thank you. Number 10. Home occupations may include retail sales subject to the following limitations. The total area devoted to retail sales is limited to 400 square feet and must be fully enclosed within a building. Yes. B, the sale of products is limited to products and articles produced, assembled, or processed on the premises, and seafood got or harvested off the premises by persons who reside in the dwelling unit, or by the one employee permitted under paragraph three above? Yes. 11, a fisherman, lobsterman, or shellfish harvester need not obtain home occupation approval except to engage in retail sales allowed under paragraph nine B above. And 12, motor vehicle, oh, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, any more discussion? I'm going to open to the public hearing. If anyone would like to make some comments, please come up to the podium and state your name. My name's David Green. I live at 135 Beach Ridge Road. I am his grandfather, so there's no mistake about it. And he's a commercial shellfish harvester because I taught him how to go do it, okay? And I've never heard anything as stupid as it above the law of the state of Maine that the town of Scarborough says I can't sell shellfish from my residence. Who, who do you people think you are? Right here, state statute. I can, I can sell them from my house, okay? Now, I'd like to hear something different from you people. And another thing that really disturbs me about this whole thing is it's quite typical of the town of Scarborough. You messed up. This town's messed up, okay? Because the ordinance committee is meeting tomorrow night right here to take up that that's okay to do what he's asking. And he paid $250 to get here to ask you that. Are you going to refund his money when the ordinance committee changes the ordinance? Because you know what? There's only 42 people in this entire town that are affected by being able to sell retail from their house. 42 commercial shellfish harvesters in this town. Okay? They're not going to pop up on every block. So I don't know what the big deal about this is. And, and you talk about having the old character of the town here. Please. Leave some character to the town that somebody can come here and buy clams and lobsters on the side of the road. Because I, I don't see why you people need to override what the state says he can do. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? I'm going to close the public hearing. There were no written comments that we received about this application, so.
and go go forward and deliberate. Now, <clears throat> now we should. Deliberate. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Bork. Yes, I. I didn't realize that the uh, planning board was meeting tomorrow in order to consider this. Is this true? It's the, it's the ordinance committee. Ordinance committee. It has. It's still got a long way oh, to go. Still a long way to go. I see. And you chose when to do the application. So even if it does have, for some reason, pass tomorrow, you could have. You don't need to, it doesn't, yeah. doesn't need to be addressed. Okay. Yeah. okay. You guys didn't write the ordinance. It's not your problem. No. And we're, yeah, and I, I guess the point I would make also is that our job is just to uh, follow the law, and the law is the ordinance. Uh, it's very clear. And the, the town ordinances are over and above whatever the state says. Um, we do have the right to approve these kind of appeals, um, and um, it's, it is within our right to do so. So I suggest that we move forward. Okay. Any other comments? Yes, Peter. First of all, I apologize for um, apparently not reading the agenda, knowing that it was 7 o'clock as opposed to 7.30, and I apologize to the members of the public and the, the appellants for not being here earlier. But um, in terms of that, the. Um, the one of the roles that we serve as a zoning um, board is to track the ongoing um, uh, trends in um, zoning exceptions and appeals and special exceptions like this. Interestingly, as a member of the Long Range Planning Committee, um, I highlighted to town planning um, staff and others the fact that um, appeals of, of exactly this nature of shellfish fishermen in the R2 and RFC districts um, have asked for a number of special exemption appeals, and that seemed like an area that was ripe for a change in the ordinance. So part of what we do here is to examine those trends and then go through the process of a public, of, of the normal public development of uh, of, of, of ordinances and, and changing ordinances. I think that it, it, while it's unfortunate for, for Mr. Holbrook in terms of timing, um, and uh, I, I, I just remind all of us that we should be paying attention to when we're seeing those trends. Um, we've seen a number of other um, special exep exemptions asked for from uh, for other folks, whether it's bakeries, whether it's um, uh, 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 white collar things around there. And when we see those trends, we should definitely be letting me know as chair, so I can uh, elevate to the to the planning um, uh, group or to the long range planning committee as we uh, look at the overall scope of our zoning laws. Um, but uh, these things happen. Um, I'm not sure what the logic of putting this in a long time ago was. But it is what it is, and we get to move forward. So, um, I, uh, I again, I apologize for being late. Any other discussion? Does anyone have a motion? Well, we need to do some fine. Oh, first. I beg. Okay. Well, I would first like to make a motion to approve the um, these. I'm sorry. It's called the. Standards. The performance standard. performance standard as a whole. I would second that. Okay. It's been seconded. All in favor? Uh, oh, is there discussion? No. Mm -hmm. You ask if there's discussion. <laughs> yes. <coughs> yes, I did. Okay. Now. Just to keep the record clear, now that Peter's here, do we relegate Joe to the back bench again? or? Why should we? I would wait until the next appeal. I, I think, it, to, to be fair to the appellant, yeah, I, I, and I'm going to abstain from mm -hmm. voting on these mm -hmm. items um, because I didn't hear the full commentary. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it was prepared well and was delivered well. I just, I, I shouldn't vote on this matter. But um, when we can, when the board comes to the conclusion of this matter, we can switch the gavel. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Are we ready to take a vote? Is discussion over? All right. All in favor? Five zero. Performance standards have been approved. Yes. Now. All right. Does anyone have any findings on the special exception approval? No. no. Just go down the list. A, B, C, D, and C. All right. Should I read it again? You can if you want. It's up to you. Okay, findings A. The proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions. I'm going to pick on you. 
Thank Mr. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> uh, as the uh, applicant has shown, there is no um, sewage disposal uh, in, in any way needed here or emissions to air or water. Uh, the, the, the shellfish that's harvested uh, basically comes, you know, ready to package and sell. Uh, so there really isn't any uh, impact at all on uh, what happens uh, over and above what's currently going on in that uh, household. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Stevenson, the proposed use will not create uns... I'm going to take it off. Oh, we'll vote. Pardon. I'll bring the comments on that. You should ask everybody to comment or just say I agree or whatever. Any comments? All right. And I take a vote. Yeah. All in favor? 5-0. Ms. Stevenson, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular pedestrian traffic conditions. Yeah, so um, Mr. Holbrook has uh, stated that he um, has a way for vehicles to safely turn around um, in the driveway and, um, you know, that the amount of traffic is going to be pretty limited. So um, it should not have um, foreseeable traffic impacts to um, the vicinity. Okay. Anyone have anything to add to that? All right. All in. All right. Uh, the applicant has created an area to... Uh, to allow car, uh, car vehicles to turn around so the vehicles will be facing out uh, toward the a busy road uh, and we'll be notifying all customers uh, of the need to do so okay thank you any other discussion all in favor I have zero item c mr silkman the proposed use will not create public safety problems, which would be different from those created by existing uses. <clears throat> it's pretty clear that <clears throat> the use of the property will be fairly minimal. There'll be no need for additional fire, police protection, those kinds of things. And <clears throat> I think the applicant has demonstrated the ability to meet this standard. Okay, thank you. Any more discussion? Anyone have anything to add? All in favor? Five, zero. And Mr. Joe, I'm sorry, your name escapes me. Please tell me your last name. Doherty. Doherty, thank you. All right. The proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion. Mr. Doherty. As Mr. Holbrook explained, there's uh, adequate space in the existing driveway and uh, as well the adjacent turnaround area that uh, has a gravel base. And so for all of those reasons, um, <laughs> yeah, we don't uh, don't see any issue with that. Thank you. Any more discussion? All in favor? Five zero. And Mr. Bork again. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size and visual impact. There will be no impact whatsoever regarding uh, the, the imp visual impact uh, or use. Uh, because we're talking about very little traffic and there'll be no change to the exterior of the property whatsoever. Everything will be conducted with inside the barn. There is going to be a sign uh, which needs to be approved by our code enforcement officer. Um, and that is at allowed, you know, as part of this uh, uh, approval. So um, we, uh, we certainly uh, feel that this has been met. Thank you. Can I address F myself? Oh, we're going to take a vote. I'm sorry. Any more discussion? All in favor? Five zero. F um, property is not located in a shoreland zone district. Madam Chair, I can verify that the property is not in the shoreland zone. Fabulous. Any more discussion? All in favor? Five zero. Um, Ms. Stevenson, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, gee. The applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest. 
Ms. Stevenson. Yeah, the applicant has shown um, that he has the right as a tenant on his grandparents' land and has enclosed the proper licensure um, and that he will keep up with anything licensure. Um, uh, I can't think of the word, but uh, any further demands that they have for him. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Five zero. And Mr. Silkman, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section. <clears throat> he has provided his shellfish licenses to us, so he obviously has the technical capacity to do this. And <clears throat> in terms of the financial resources to carry it out, they're very minimal. So he's met those standards. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Five zero. Mr. Doherty, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood. As the applicant had uh, explained earlier, there are other bus similar businesses in the area, and it's certainly within the, uh, uh, the RF zone to operate this type of business. So from that perspective, he meets that standard. Thank you. OK. And yes, Mr. Bork. Uh, for the combat, the applicant has uh, agreed to um, uh, change the uh, text here from stand to inside of the shed. So all business will be conducted in the shed in compliance with the uh, requirements of our standards. Thank you. All right. If there's no further discussion, does someone want to make a motion? Uh, I wouldn't have... Oh, I beg your pardon. Okay. All in favor? Five zero. Thank you. Okay. I, oh, I was yes. going to say I motion to approve um, appeal twenty seven fifty. Very I'll good. Second that. Mr. Silkman seconds it. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor? Five zero. Thank you all, and good luck to you. You may, if you have something you want to say. Thank you for your time, and I do really appreciate it with um, not only addressing me personally, but looking towards the future and hopefully better addressing kind of the ordinances and the future of commercial shell fishing. Um, the reason I actually came here today was because I lost my main distributor recently they decided to um, stop doing business locally. Um, that being said, it is, it's really nice to know that you guys don't kind of forget about the little man here. Now, Elijah, I, as the, the formal chair, I, think, I want to thank you for coming to us, for treating this with the seriousness that you did, um, and, uh, and for going through the process. The process isn't always fun. It doesn't always move at the pace we like it to, but we really appreciate it when citizens come and, and do the right thing. So thank you very much. And good luck. Good luck. Yeah, thank indeed. You. Tomorrow I, I, I leave for a summer vacation in Italy. So maybe I'm already on a plane. I don't, I don't know. So, there. <laughs> um, I'll be gone for almost two weeks. So yeah. Apulia, the southern bird. Yeah, exactly. We'll talk later. I don't, I don't want that on the record. Um, <laughs> so um, the next um, appeal that we have is, uh, uh, let's see, I'm sure I have the right one here. Um, 2751, which is marked as 2750 on my application. Um, 2751 um, uh, from uh, a special exception permit, another special exception permit, um, proposing the produce and sell, sale of baked goods, it sounds like, um, by Miss Caitlin Johnson on 51 Pine Point Road. Miss Johnson, if you would approach the uh, 
the podium there and uh, take us through an overview of your uh, appeal. Yes. Yes. Point of order, um, Mr. Doherty is no longer a voting member. Got it. Oh. We, uh, at any given time, we have five voting members. So when we have six people in atten- six voting members in attendance, whoever is the alternate falls to the alternate position. That's right. Thank you, Brian. No, he's still. Yeah, exactly. We appreciate his comments, exactly. And we especially appreciate his uh, attendance at the, at, the, at the podium. So, or not the podium, the. Especially when the chair doesn't make it on the podium. Exactly. They, yeah, somebody's got to get that guy in order. I'm sorry. No, we, okay. we, have, we have a very good relationship here among the, 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 the board. But most mm-hmm. importantly, we're here for you, Caitlin. So, yes, um, no, thank you so much for having me. I, I really appreciate it. Um, my name is Caitlin Johnson. I'm um, the chef owner of uh, Ivy Hill Baking Company. Hope to be out of 51 Pine Point Road. Um, Ivy Hill Baking Company, um, I've been a baker for my entire life. Um, I worked in all kinds of kitchens and now I'm trying to do something for myself and uh, basically just trying to try to start small. Um, I um, am hoping to do sourdough breads, cookies, pastries, obviously all within the parameters of the, what the state or the city um, issues. Um, but it's all going to be um, from scratch, craft baking, um, like I said, sourdoughs, I mill my own wheat. Um, everything takes a few days to prepare, whether it's a cookie or my sourdough bread, which can take th- up to three days to make. Um, short term, obviously, um, will be out of my house. I'm hoping to do a lot of wholesale, mostly, um, working with cafes, um, local um, restaurants, um, or sorry, yeah, restaurants or markets, um, and then the occasional, um, due to the uh, demand that I've received from um, some of my neighbors in Pine Point um, asking for me to kind of sell to them because they, they see a need for my product, um, especially when they're going to the beach or they're on vacation, um, but most of what I plan to do will be hopefully wholesale, um, uh, just uh, with the hope that obviously I would like to open up my own uh, facility here in Scarborough, but right now it'll be a little bit more wholesale, um, as I said, and then with the occasional um, pickup from my house. Now I have been um, told that there is concern about traffic. Um, my property um, is on a busy road, which I understand my driveway can fit up to, I think on Thanksgiving I had about nine cars parked there over the weekend and plenty of space to turn around. Um, I do plan on putting um, a sign that does comply with regulations just um, on my property line, just before my property, just so people know that this is where you would pick up bread. Um, Pickup would only be one day a week because, as I said, my my process takes a few days, um, so I don't have the ability to just whip up cookies or whip up a loaf of bread just offhanded. So a lot of what my... um, business plan will entail is um, taking pre-orders probably on a Monday or a Tuesday, giving myself that the rest of the week to prepare those products, and then pickup would be on Friday, um, very uh, at a, on a designated time, um, usually about a three to four hour, um, just to give people who are at work or maybe traveling into town to be able to swing by, but it's only going to be a very limited time for people coming to my property, because as I said, it just takes too long for me to, do my, to, to build my products. Um, so there won't be constant traffic um, coming in and out. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's all. So thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, before we go to the uh, performance standard discussion, I just wanted to um, ask if there's any general questions from the members of the board um, from, the, uh, from that general summary. Start with Mr. Moore. Okay. So just uh, reading through the application, you say you're going to be using social media as a way of selling? Yes, or word of mouth, yes. Okay, so the... Um, how will customers order? Do you have an online process? For that? Yes, I will have a website, and pr- um, orders will be submitted um, through the website. As I said, probably um, I haven't set up an actual timeline, but it'll probably be Tuesday at the latest, and then um, I will know how many orders to prepare for the end of the week. Great. Uh, so that means that your customers will then know that the pickup day is Friday. Exactly. And you know, and if it gets real busy, you could possibly add a pickup day on Tuesday. You mentioned. 
I could. I'm, I, I, I'm, yes, I could. <laughs> but then what, what I heard today, tonight, was a little different in terms of, I was going to ask the question, as a matter of fact, so wholesale is really uh, what you project to be the bulk of your business? I'm hoping so. I mean, yeah. when, when I begin, obviously, it is going to be more uh, of social media world of mouth people coming to my home until I can get out into the community and, and speak with, with local companies, businesses, so that they do sell my products. So, but yes, ideally, right. it would be wholesale. Okay. So when you take orders online then, will they pay for the products online too? They will. And they will be told beforehand that payment is accepted because um, due to the quality of products that I use I, and the time that it takes me to prepare a single loaf of bread, I'd like to have the payment up front, but I, am very, I will be very clear up front that once you submit your order, if there's any issues, if there's anything on my part, obviously, you, are, you, know, you get a refund, but pay payments will be um, given upon purchase of the product. That's, yeah. that's smart. <laughs> uh, and will they be... So there'll be a window of, what was the time frame on Tuesday? I'm thinking on Friday, 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 yeah, 3 to 7 is to kind seven, of what I'm thinking, okay. yeah. So that'll be a window, and they could come any time during that time, and you'll have things on the rack all identified by name. And exactly. Everything will be prepared. Yes. Yeah, so, so people will come into my property will probably only be parked for maybe 20 seconds at most because everything will be ready to yeah, go. that's really what I wanted to get to is mm -hmm. in and out fast because you've really done all the transaction ahead of time. You know exactly what they want. It's been paid for. It's all processed, bagged up, labeled, ready to go. Exactly. And I do, I will provide my cell phone number so that if anybody has any concerns prior to pickup, they are welcome to reach out to me too. But yes, it should be a very quick and easy pickup. Okay. Uh, regarding a wholesale uh, business that you want to build in the future, uh, will you be delivering the products to um, the various wholesale accounts? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there wouldn't be any customers coming to your home? No, no, everything will be delivered. Uh, packaging is a little bit different, but it's pretty much the same oh, yes. kind of setup, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and okay, that's, those are the only questions I had up front. Thank Great, you. Thank you. That was my question. Yeah. Um, uh, so in terms of that, it, it is a rather busy road. And it's three to seven on Fridays, particularly in the summertime, um, are rather busy. And in the wintertime, that's a, an area of particularly low visibility uh, in the dark at that point. Yeah. That can be challenging. Um, uh, and did, did you catch what I asked? I did, yes. Yeah, okay, got it. Thank you. Um, so I guess have you given some thought or have you um, to, to that window? Would it be possible to break the window, say, to two windows of between one and three and another window between six and eight so that you could avoid the mass traffic um, time? Oh, absolutely. And, and, and let folks know? Because I can imagine, and I'm thinking especially in the summertime, um, that window where people are coming to Pine Point um, from where they've Boston or from other areas, yeah. that's a particularly backed up time um, in Pine Point. That's a good point, yeah. Um, so um, uh, perhaps I'd, uh, we'd, we'd ask you to give some thought to that as a, as a way of reducing the impact on that, that neighborhood in that time. Yes, absolutely. So um, no, I, the other question I had was about the wholesale stuff, and we got that. So. May, I, may I add to that? Uh, the one, of, one of the, and I'll ask Peter because you, you're familiar with that road, not, not yeah. so much. Yeah. Uh, one of the slowest times of the day on that road. The slowest times, time. this time of year, the slowest times without question are from four to six. Okay. Um, and in fact, there's the, 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 it, the, the back, the, there's a backup on Route 1 on both directions trying to get onto Pine Point Road. Right. And then there's a backup on Pine Point Road trying to get out of Pine Point. Right. So yeah, and and then during the the summer the, the the school year, the busiest time is from about two to four when the school buses and parents are going back and forth because Blue Point School has a lot of kids that come into that area. So okay, well okay, so I want to be clear. So the slowest time of the year in the summertime, which is the busiest time of the year for that, you know, yep. you know for Pine Point Road exactly, out, because of all the tourists here. Yep. All right, is from four to six. Yes. Okay, I would have thought it could have been maybe from two to five okay but you know just some sometime there which avoids rush hour yeah and, and because in the middle part of the day four to six in, has both rush hour traffic from people who are going into portland to work or going around from pine locals who live in pine point and leave pine point to, to work but most people who come to pine point on friday afternoons are coming from points south um, or points north from quebec and they're funneling in to get there in time for dinner 
Guys, are we kneeling her down on time? She can ha- run her business. Can we move on from this? Yeah, no, and, and I'm, uh, again, if, Sorry, I just... Sure. No, that's fine, and, and um, but yeah, I just want to answer yeah, the, just the sports question. Further point I'd like to make, back to the wholesale. The more you can divert your business to wholesale, the better it's going to be. Yeah, correct. As far as alleviating the potential issues with uh, traffic congestion for your retail customers. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I agree. It's really important to build your business on the wholesale side so that the retail side is a small percentage of what you do. Yes, I completely agree with you. Okay, good. The other, uh, one final question from, from my book. Um, I've seen the, your lot, actually, I live further down on pine, off of Pine oh. Plains, um, and I saw your house at Thanksgiving time, so you can't fit a number of car, cars in a lot. Um, I guess the question I have, do you have any estimate of how many people will be coming in, the, in, that, in, that, in that time? You, I mean, there's obviously a hope, but have you kind of built a projection of what that might look like? Unfortunately, not very many. I'm cooking out of a home kitchen, and it's a 36 electric stove and an oven, and I'm baking sourdough bread, So, I, and they take like 45 minutes to bake. I can probably, in a matter of a day, I can probably bake out maybe 15 loaves, 16, okay. something like It's not, it's... I'm gonna feel I'm gonna feel the the heat of of bread and sales coming in way before I feel like anybody around me will because it's gonna build up really quickly. That's very helpful <laughs> in scaling as well what the traffic might look like. Yeah, well, and as I said before, like this, I'm hoping to use this as kind of just a starting point, you know. And so when I feel like I'm getting to the point where I'm overwhelmed or the neighborhood's overwhelmed because there's so much traffic, I'm clearly doing something right, and I'm gonna hopefully move into a, a you know a facility, an actual restaurant or a cafe in the area. But yeah. Okay. Just one final point. I don't, don't mean to keep bringing so many things into this, but uh, when you do finally get to the point where you're ready to move out, come and talk to Fort Food Lab. Oh, uh, yeah, I, 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 I've, I've tried. <laughs> there. a little plug because I'm an advisor and consultant. Oh, are you? I heard that, yeah, I, I reached out, but I heard that every, the facility's moving, and so everything's kind of quiet. Oh, it has, okay. And they're accepting about 100 new members right now. Really? Well, that's good to know. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Doherty, Mr. Stilton, any, any questions from you guys? Or great, terrific. In that case, um, were there any public comments? There are not. Um, and I don't see any members of the public here. So at that point, I'll close the public comment. Um, you missed your opportunity to use the gavel on um, the snow. <laughs> from here, um, we'll go through the performance standards. And the first thing um, we'll do is we'll go through the list, as Ms. Snow did in the last appeal, and we'll ask you to just read in the responses. <laughs> um, so uh, the building or occupation, or excuse me, the occupation or profession shall be carried on wholly within the principal building or within a building accessory thereto. That's correct, just in my home. The home occupation shall be clearly incidental and secondary to the use of the dwelling unit for residential purposes. That's correct. No more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling unit shall be employed in the home occupation. Just me. <laughs> Exterior signage shall be permitted in accordance with the home occupation sign provisions under section 11, or section, get my Roman numerals right, under section 12 sign regulations, subsection E. Yeah, any sign will comply with regulations. Great. There shall be no external dis exterior display, exterior storage of materials, and no other exterior indication of the home occupation or variation from the residential character of the principal building, except as explicitly permitted by the district regulations of this ordinance, and this prohibition shall not apply to the storage of lobster traps. Mm -hmm. Nope, it'll just be in my home. Wonderful. No nuisance shall be generated, including but not necessarily limited to offensive noise, vibration, smoke, dust, odors, heat, or glare. No, no noise. Yeah. The traffic generated by such home occupation shall not increase the volume of traffic so as to create a traffic hazard or disturb the residential character of the immediate neighborhood. As we discussed, I'm going to definitely work on uh, changing the time that do, they do pick up so that traffic does not get to be ex excess. Terrific. In addition to the off-street parking provided to meet the normal re requirements of the dwelling, adequate off-street parking shall be provided for the vehicles of such employee and the vehicles of the maximum number of users or customers the home occupation may attract during peak operating hours. Yeah, I should have sufficient parking. Thank you. The home occupation may utilize no more than 20% of the dwelling floor unit area dwelling unit floor area, provided that for the purposes of this calculation, unfinished basement and attic spaces are not included unfinished um, attic and basement spaces may be used, and space within an accessory building totaling not more than 1,000 square feet of floor area. That's correct. Home occupations may include retail sales subject to the following limitations. 
The total area devoted to retail sales is limited to 400 square feet and must be fully enclosed within a building. The sale of products will be limited to products and articles produced, assembled by, or processed or on, the, on the premises, and seafood caught or harvested off the premises by persons who reside in the dwelling unit or by, one employee, or by the one employee permitted under paragraph three above. Hmm, that's correct. Uh, and the next two are not applicable. Okay. Um, so with that, are there any discussion from our friends in the, on the board of the uh, performance centers? No? Uh, could... No. Yeah, I want to make a motion. Yeah. That, that's what I was just about to ask for. So um, could I ask for a motion to accept the performance standards in their entirety as re 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 So moved. Thanks. Second. Can I, second from Ms. Snow. Um, is there any discussion? Uh, may I have a vote, please? Uh, all those in favor? This passes five, nothing. Love that. <laughs> Um, next, we will go through the standards for special exceptions. So if you stay with us, um, uh, again, we'll read through these. Um, the proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, water, or other aspects of its design or operation. No, due to the how I run my kitchen, uh, the proposed use will not create any unsanitary, unhealthful conditions. Uh, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in the vicinity. No, um, I hope to have the sign and I hope to um, have pickup times available with, that um, doesn't add to traffic. Thank you. The proposed use will not create public safety problems which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree in municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. No, it should be okay. The proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. No. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the physical, physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other resources, and density of development. Uh, no, it'll just be my house. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, Mr. Longstaff, I assume this is not located in the Shoreline Zone? Got to accept that as read. The applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Yes, it's my, my own house. Okay. Uh, the applicant has a technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to Section 5 of this section. Yeah, I have no concerns. And the, pro 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 the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses of the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours. Yes, correct. Okay. Um, subject to what we've talked about for exactly for the yes. hours. Okay, great. Um, with that, uh, um, thank you very much. We will then turn to, um, we'll go through this one by one and uh, discuss it as a group. Um, thanks. If we have any more questions, you can, um, uh, you can feel free to sit down. Okay, thank you. So uh, this seems straightforward, I'll say at the start, but we should discuss each one if we do. So um, who would like to take start off with number with A. Um, and the appellant did not read the full um, uh, uh, response, but that obviously is part of the public record and she's given a good explanation. So I didn't think that was necessary. So Mrs. Snow, if you could talk about A. Well, <clears throat> the applicant has stated that she uses minimal ingredients. There will be no waste produced, nothing that she won't be able to compost and there is no uh, excess unsanitary or unhealthful conditions. On the property. Any discussion? Okay. Uh, 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 may I have a vote for whether this uh, the applicant has met the terms of this uh, requirement? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Motion. Do we need a motion for these? No, I think we just. I do think. A, oh, this is one. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah. For five nothing. This one passes. Um, and for that, Mr. Bork, you can cover the next one. Great. <laughs> So the proposed use will not uh, create uh, safety for traffic. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Shelley. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I keep forgetting. Um, uh, uh, rather than read through the rest of the question, um, I'd just like to summarize quickly. Uh, I think the applicant has provided a very good plan for turnaround here, which will um, standardize the process for customers, retail customers picking up the uh, uh, product. Uh, to pull in, be able to do a turnaround, and then turn out, out so that they're facing the road as they exit, uh, which is the safest possible way of doing this. Uh, and, um, you know, as long as that's followed, which I think the applicant is, is making it very clear, you know, how she plans to do that, and I'm sure that could be included on the website, 
uh, which I'm glad to see you have a website. Uh, this is uh, this really uh, meets the criteria very well. I think the added thing I'd like to point out here is that the applicant proposes to build her wholesale trade, which will minimize the impact of the retail uh, customers. Any other discussion? Mr. Silver. <clears throat> I, I, I don't think we should be imposing conditions or the notion in this exception that the retail trade will disappear. I mean, we are granting her a permit to do this forever, whether the wholesale business develops or not. I'm perfectly comfortable with that, but I don't think that there should be any notion among us that we're doing this in the expectation that her business will disappear from this location yep. because the wholesale trade will take over. Well said. And Dave? I, I don't Good. think that was stated. Yeah. Okay. The one thing I would add on this one, and I would propose this in our final motion, is that we do ask the um, appellant to have two delivery zones that, that bookend the rush hour. Um, I think that um, speaks to the vehicular conditions of the area. And um, it sounds like that's not an undue burden on the, app, app, uh, the appellant for this. And I think it will help how, tra how ultimately the police department manages um, traffic in that area. Um, so, uh, yes. <clears throat> I've not seen any traffic study of, of Pine Point Road in terms of when it is most no. busy and when it is least busy. I use it too, right? <laughs> I look down at the end of Pine Point Road. Um, <clears throat> it's completely variable. I've been on that road at 10 in the morning and backed up 15 cars because somebody from Quebec doesn't know that you can actually make a right-hand turn on red. I mean, it, I think the traffic conditions on that, you know, and on that street during that are highly variable, and I would be reluctant to impose any conditions on the hours of operation without a, an understanding of where the traffic, how the traffic actually flows on the road through a traffic study. So if we, just in anticipation of that, if that's part of the motion, then I will vote against that piece of the motion, but in support of the applicant's proposal as it stands. I just wanted to make sure that I was I appreciate clear. that. And, 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 uh, and, and you're right. I haven't seen a traffic study for that either. At the same time, it would be, I think it would be tough to put a burden on an a applicant of this size and, and an appeal of this nature of getting a traffic study done. So it was trying to propose something that was... Um, a, 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 an easy fix, and it sounded like the applicant in her comments was more than willing to consider such an approach. She'll figure out when the best time is to be open, when her customers want to pick up stuff. Customers generally don't like to pick up things when there's a lot of traffic. It'll sort itself out. Gotcha. We'll see what we propose. <laughs> but thank you. Um, on that base, oh, Mr. Yeah, Bork, or yes, did, I yeah. just want to be on record saying I concur with Mr. Silva's gotcha. you know, desire not to have any conditions on ours. Yeah. I'm very comfortable with the fact that the applicant has stated that she wants to adjust it to the least traffic on the street to cause the least conflict. Yes. I'm comfortable with that. Yep. Uh, I agree with Mr. Silkman's comments on that. Sounds like there's consensus on that one, then. Um, in any event, for, on this particular um, item, is there any further discussion? Do we feel that the applicant has met this condition? Um, could I see a show of hands? Yay? Five nothing. Terrific. Um, Shelly, could you grab the uh, item C? Yeah, do, you, do you want me to read it yeah. first? Uh, so it's the proposed uh, use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require substantially greater degree in the municipal fire or police protection other than the existing uses in the neighborhood. Um, you know, other than she seems like a very uh, seasoned baker, so I don't see um, any, uh, you know, extra fire or police protection being needed um, other than any other person cooking in their in their own home. Um, and uh, public safety, we kind of already addressed that a little bit with traffic and turning around and um, getting in and out of the driveway. But so overall, I don't see any um, large uh, public safety problems in the future here. Any other discussion? Good. Uh, 
Could I see a show of hands? Has the appellant met the requirements under condition C? Passes 5-0. I'll do dynam D. The proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. Um, uh, given the description of the business and the um, discussion that she's not planning to uh, uh, um, dispose of materials out other than through the drain and, and other things, which might otherwise create exterior conditions, I think these, uh, the, this um, has been demonstrated to have been met. Um, any other discussions? Can I see a show of hands that the panel has met this condition? Five, nothing. Um, uh, Mr. Doherty, um, we won't be able to vote on it, but if we would take us through to item E. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. As the applicants explained, there's no expansion. On the property, she'll be using the existing kitchen, the existing uh, parking area, and um, will have minimal signage that'll comply with the uh, town requirements. So from that perspective, she meets the standard. Great. I would only add that that section of Pine Point Road has a number of small home businesses. Um, so in terms of keeping in the character of, of other uses in the neighborhood, I, I, I think this, this beats that criteria as well. Any other discussion? Mr. Bork? Yeah, I'd just like to add as a finding of fact that the uh, applicant will be uh, taking all payments uh, on, on the applicant's website ahead of time so that the amount of time a customer spends picking up will be extremely limited. Do we feel that the appellant has met this term? Uh, can I see a show of hands, please? Passes five, nothing. Mr. Silkman, will you take us through uh, um, Number or no with shoreland zoning, we can we've established that already. Um, the uh, take through item G then, please. So the, applicant has sufficient the applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be carry to be able to carry out the proposed use. Um, the applicant's provided us our property tax record. She owns the property. She has sufficient right, title, and interest. Anything else to discuss? We felt that this has been met. Show of hands. Passes five, nothing. Um, I'll take Adam H uh, to clear up any confusion. The applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of the section to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to section five of this section. I think she has um, shown that um, she has no concerns with meeting any conditions. I don't believe any conditions will be um, applied on, on, on this. Um, you've heard some concerns. Um, we're thrilled that you are um, showing a willingness to, to think carefully about the impact on the neighborhood and, 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 that, and that seems more than sufficient. So. Um, any other discussion on this item? Uh, could I see a show of hands if the appellant has met this? Five nothing. Last but not least, um, I'll do this one too. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. This has largely been met by the applicant's discussion and other items, but the hours of operations will be from um, will be brief on one day of the week, maybe on Tuesdays, um, and the amount of time um, spent on property will be minimal as they pick up an item that they've already paid for and has been already um, tagged with for for their. For, for, for their use. We hope that the only issue will be a stampede of people trying to buy your products. So do we feel that this one has been met? Five nothing, terrific. May I entertain a motion to approve or to deny the appeal? Mr. Bork. So moved. Second, please. Second. Second. Uh, is there any further discussion by the board? Hearing none, uh, may I have a vote to, uh, um, to uh, approve special exemption permit application 2751, Ms. Caitlin Johnson at 51 Pine Point. Rubus 5 nothing. The appeal passes. Good luck. You bet. And do we have any comments from staff? On other issues, other things? No, I don't have anything for the board. Got it. Um, Mr. Longstone, could you remind me, do we have a regular August meeting, or do we skip August and go straight to September? No, nope, we have a meeting every month. Every month, okay, there's, there's no, no summer recess. 7 p.m. No <laughs> 7 p.m., yes, indeed. Sharp. 7 p.m., indeed. 
Um, uh, had, I no had I realized it was a seven o'clock, I would have avoided my mom's Salisbury steak for dinner as well, which would have been, so, so I, uh, I suffer the consequences. Any other comments from the members of the board? <laughs> Any other comments from the board? Brian, you said you were going to send around the remote meeting rules or regulations. I will do that for the next I meeting. I knew you just forgot yeah. about it, so uh, if you wouldn't mind just... I, I will do that for the next meeting. We've, we've just been short-staffed. I've been run, running crazy. And there is no, wish, no hurry on yeah. this. I just, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, cool. I will do that. Yeah, so the, probably the only hurry is before winter storm season. On, so, but otherwise, we're in good shape. So uh, if there's nothing else, uh, may I entertain a motion to adjourn? Thank you. Uh, second? I'll second that. All approved. We are adjourned for the evening. Thank you very much. We can stop recording.